Good start. Forget myself. Forget the cat. For the camera. Oh, let me out. What do I actually need? No. <sighs> greetings and Sabbath greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who is at once Father, Son and Holy Spirit the, the maker and creator of the heavens and the earth and all the things therein the first and the last the beginning and the end the God of Abraham of Isaac of Jacob the God of the Bible and God of his people his church the followers of Jesus Amen Wow um, Always need for prayer Sabbath greetings and blessings Lord we thank you for this day we thank you for the opportunity to share and to speak and thank you for the far flung horizons I thank you for the world and its vastness and its complexity and its beauty and its splendor I thank you for the opportunity we have to come before you, to share before you, to be your people, to be your church. And it's in this that we're going to speak today, Lord. I pray for your words and not mine to be spoken. I pray for your spirit, your truth, your life, your light, your blessing to be upon your people. That your kingdom may come upon the earth, that your glory may be known, that, 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 that the truth that Jesus is that you are and will always be is something that people need to hear and I pray that they hear it and pray that they receive it for your glory alone not that I be lifted up or vaunted or put in a special place but only that I acknowledge and point others to you for the things that you have done, are doing, and will do. Amen. <laughs> it's a chilly day here. Where I sit. And yet not without its beauty. I've preached from here, uh, around this area, a few times now. And throughout the changing seasons of the year, there's some very obvious uh, um, demarcations. And one being the, the state of the uh, uh, lotus, uh, it's wrong to say fields, the lotus uh, plantation in the corner of the estuary. I don't know if it's man-made. Uh, I know certain areas of it are cultivated because it's uh, used for fishing. There's somebody fishing just close by. But the scenes today here in January, Shavat, are scenes of winter desolation. The, 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 the plants die back totally. They, they turn brown. The grasses by the edge of the lake turn brown. There's very little vegetation left compared to the verdant. I mean, I, I preached. I mean, the last time I preached here, I preached among the, the, the bushes which are now desolate, just dry, uh, uh, dead bracken and dry grass and flooded because of the rains that we've had, the lake level slightly higher. Uh, 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 and it, what a stark contrast, even a few months, and even then it was raining and cold to the, you know, the, the, the 
testimony of those changing seasons, the wonder and splendor of spring and the growth that can come, that, they, that that whole area that's now desolate will be full of flowers and plants and birds and life. Wow. The, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the majesty of our king and the firmament shows his handiwork. God's brilliance is 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 beauty is 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 creativity his intelligence his wisdom his splendor is evident in all the things that he's made and this is a cursed world this is a world that groans under the burden of the curse that has been placed upon it this is a world that that you know as a, as a mother in birth pangs is, is pained to struggle with man to that, that man must strive to make a living from the ground where once in, in, the, in the time of the Garden of Eden you just put forth your hand and fruits of, of unimaginable sweetness and, and, and wonder would, would, be, you know, would come into them and drop into those hands. Now we, we, we are brought to this time where we must struggle and strive with the land because of the transgressions of man, because of his stubbornness and hard-heartedness his desire for self it's one of the things I've come to speak about today where in a series of Sabbath messages about the, the foundation of the Church of Carpe Cruxus, about the identity, vision, values, goals, whatever, you know, they say, what, what, what is, what is the essentialness of the Church of Carpe Cruxus? And I've talked about that, that, that need in this day and age for a church that, 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 that is the Bride of Christ, that, that puts itself forward as, as, as the church that, that from Daniel 2 we see a white stone not f not formed by human hands come forth from the feet of iron and clay that's where we, we talked about last week that's the timeline and the world's timeline that's emphatically where I believe that's where the Church of Carpe Cruxus believes it to be it is that's where we are, the Roman Empire ending in, in ninth, the late 1960s, early 1970s by Roman counted, and um, was coming into that feet of iron and clay, and that's where we've been for the last 50 years, and acknowledging the fact that feet are comparatively short compared to legs and, and, and you know, chests and bodies and even heads, so this time will be comparatively short compared to those others, that in this, this, this landscape of huge technological change and advantage and power struggle, in, not just in terms of the, you know, the seat of nations, but behind there, companies and, 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 and individuals and groups who manipulate and own, you know, the, the, the vast majority of what we know and see. The, 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 the gospel has traveled to the ends of the earth, that the, the, the world is being dissected and cut up and bought and in all of that mixture in the cultures and the societies and the, and, 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 and the things of the world, the God of the Bible, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is still sovereign. He still sent his son, finished the work of salvation at the cross of Calvary, and this is part of his ongoing work towards the full redemption of his people to himself. That day that will come when God will return, Jesus will return on the clouds, and the new Jerusalem will come down, and people will be uh, lifted up, and they will face a judgment, and people will pass either to one side or the other, welcome home, my good and faithful servant, or it's as if I never knew you, and they will pass into a lake of fire, or they will pass into heaven for a new heaven and a new earth to come forth that will be enjoyed and that rightness and that beauty that curse will be no longer present 
be remade, renewed, reborn. All of creation will be born again through that act of re that return, that act of redemption, and it, things will continue from that point and infinite and forever with those people present and God present in his creation as it was at the beginning wow you know what a work that God has set himself set forth in order to retrieve that which is lost me and you glory hallelujah glory amen I join with the angels and the saints in, 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 in lifting my hands in, in worship and praise and acknowledgement that God who is God is God has ever been God has been doing this from the beginning yet knowing fully that the pain and the potential for pain that we could bring as people as rebellious sons and daughters uh, that, that, that may cause all of this to happen <laughs> Oh, I put the tree, well, I put this, and why put that? No, it's, it's the necessity for things to be in their purest and most beautiful and holy form, right and good, before God, so that people can be with God. It's not a, our choice. It's entirely with Him, and it's not out of capriciousness, because we see evident throughout God's profession of His love for His people that continued desire to be in relationship with them, not a relationship of toys on a map like the gods of Olympus, not a relationship of indifferent playthings like the, the gods of the, of the Matariki and the moon and the, no, not, not cold and distant, but personal and intimate and caring and good, his essential being is good and that's the 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 the, the, the outtake the uptake that's the ultimate goal that's the that's the destination that we're traveling to it's part of the inevitability these things must come to pass these things are set to be fulfilled when Daniel spoke about the interpretation of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel 2. He said this prophecy is. Faithful and true. Can be trusted and all the other things have come to pass. So it, it's an ongoing and in working indwelling prophecy and that's why I, I believe it's important because prophecy you can only ever see where you are in a prophecy or what how it pertains when it comes to pass and yet this this prophecy because it's it's set at various times throughout history that's when we can see when it comes to pass and alexander the great is like oh yeah he's that and that also fulfills those and you know the assyrian empire and the Roman Empire, all according to God's word, coming to pass because it's a true and trustworthy prophecy. As such, it also will and is continuing because it's a true and trustworthy prophecy. Ayers, eels. Verse 45, chapter, Daniel chapter 2. This is the meaning of your vision of the stone being hewn from a mountain, not by human hands, and then shattering the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The mighty God has made known to your majesty what is to be hereafter. The dream is sure and the interpretation to be trusted. And this is a you know a, a, a founding concept, a founding truth of the Church of Carpe Cruxis. That's where we are, 
and that's what's coming the white stone and the church of carpentry crooks is to be the white stone not formed by human hands god's will can only make it grow i mean there's just me here and this camera and and uh, the few people around the world that i share with but do any of them subscribe do i have any members any followers no because it's not about me and it is about the church something that's formed by god that will be verified by god that will be built by god and it won't be done in the way that the other churches have because they have all given themselves over at some point to mammon they've all given themselves over to bacchus or whatever source of money and wealth to to, to guarantee their success yes it may be out of a desire to serve god in the first place but yet as the time has worn on as the desire for success man's success rather than god's success has grown they have you know accepted gifts they have accepted help from from other sources and those other sources have established them so the uh, anglican church waited needed henry the eighth the king of england to to f uh, fund uh, uh, the the foundation of the church so that uh, he could get divorced so it's founded on a falsehood and that's why even now this great church of the ages this great you know opposition of the of the roman catholic church uh, is crumbling in the same way that the roman catholic church should crumble because they're all founded on wrong precepts they all follow wrong practices they don't do the simple stuff well and this is the truth this is the true church that will do that will operate through all those places because it will be people who stand for righteousness and truth who follow after the living god who follow after the precepts and word of christ who pursue justice and peace and righteousness and goodness and charity and love in those ways that the bible lays down that will be god's people they are the true people they are less in this world in this environment they are far far less than even the church itself reveals yes there still could be many saved but those who are actively working and pursuing in discipleship and fellowship and following of god uh, 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 it seems ludicrous this view and yet what i prevaricate what i pray for what i found the church for and what i believe it will become is it will become that which grows and in that growth will be what daniel's prophecy says that the the you know, um, stone will grow until it becomes a mountain and that mountain will grow until it covers the whole earth that, that will be the true church of god we will enjoy a thousand years of that church's reign of that change throughout our cities and throughout our nations throughout our world that will that, that will transform the world that we live in that will that will say we can't continue building houses for the rich we can't continue buying up all the land and saying we own this and putting these people in debt we can't continue in that way of the upright statue because it's wrong it's clearly wrong it clearly doesn't and never will work and what we need is a different system what we need is is a total change away from the way things have always been and into a place of glorious light where we will be god's people that we will experience his spirit and truth and blessing as we operate in spirit and truth of blessing and in that shared message that will be you know shared in every language in every tongue and, and shared in a way where it's contact and practice is immediate that the testing in there will also test people test their spirits test their resolve test them for for rightness and goodness that they may pursue that that all the elected members all the people who who work through the fields will work in righteousness and truth it will be evident and obvious it will be transparent and open and in that everybody will know how things work and how things are brought about and how we come together and supply those needs for those people that haven't until we you know in, in, in a few years in a few generations we change from a world of greed and, and lust and carnality to one of of spiritual rightness of, of, of desire of, of, of goodness and grace and mercy and compassion and peace that this world could amply supply the needs of the people in it.
not just to the 7 billion, but to the 10, to the 20, to the 50, to the 100 billion. If we properly steward and we agree to work in righteousness and truth. Stop lying, to stop accumulating things for ourselves and instead give ourselves over to, to there should be a standard of living for everybody to enjoy access to health care and support if you if you fall between the rafters but not to dwell and tarry there that you might also lift up and strive to help reach out to others but there aren't people that sit back and take advantage or think that that's a viable option that set aside the the destruction the drugs and the and the pursuits of of, of destruction while providing help and security for those things which are there, which are evident, but through the Spirit of God, through the Spirit of Truth, through the engagement and right practice in the church, begin to lay aside the differences. And yes, oh, well, other people have tried that. Is there a church that hasn't been established, that hasn't desired to be the church of Christ, to be the church of vision, to be the church with the Spirit, to be the church with goodness and grace and mercy and compassion as rightness flowing through as its lifeblood? And yet, I would argue, I would prevaricate that there's been no time like this because of the things that have come to pass, because of the need to fulfill the, the prophecies and the things God's will rather than our own and His timing rather than our own. These things must come to pass. These things must necessarily follow on and after the other. And though we may not understand them now, here, our trust is in God who does, who is perfect, who sees all, who knows all. He is our, our firm foundation. He is our rock upon which we stand. And that's, that's enough, more than enough, for me to continue from day to day, continue to pursue the things of the kingdom to open his word uh, and seek his relationship with his spirit that we may discern correctly the things of righteousness and truth that we don't pursue off after our selfish ambitions. I had a young man, a man, a preach, only this week, a short message, a short testimony, and its entirety was a justification of his own selfish desire. Even to the point where, where he tied, tried his best to bond scripture to justify his selfish desire. And then used prayer to bond people's word and heart and mind to his selfish desire. Enough, enough of this. Stop. How do we stop it? Do we stand and rebuke? Do we fight? Clench our fists? Pray and continue to trust and believe and be the church of righteousness and truth. God's people going before God, proclaiming the things of God, praying for the opportunity and the time for the Holy Spirit to deliver us to a place where we'll get the where we get the opportunity to speak of such things. You know, knowing that the, in the in in the shrewdness of our age, that the people who act and who are setting their faces like flints against the things of God will we'll do so to their death, will do so to, to the death of those that, that stand against them. Thank you God for such days to live in. Oh, but it, it, it hurts. You want, you want to nurture and encourage and, 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 and say like to a child no no there's, there's a right way to go there's a good way to follow you, 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 baptizing children it's not biblical dedicating children 
There you go. That's what you do. That's what was done. That's the example from the Bible. Look to the scriptures. And, 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 and previously, when we've spoken on this, you know, where is there example in the Bible where children are baptised? None. Not one. Oh, but it's infer inference isn't an example. Inference is an inference. Oh, their whole household was baptised. But in, in reality, that, that in that age and in that time, they just they wouldn't. Oh, should we baptise the children? Do you understand the message of the gospel? Then be baptised. Do you not understand the message about the gospel? Well, while I'm in charge of you, the best I can do is dedicate you. I can sanctify you towards Christ in the same way that Job, Job sanctified his sons. But the sons didn't sanctify themselves when, when the authority was taken away from Job to sanctify. When he was placed under the authority of Satan, Satan had the right to destroy what was Job's what didn't justify itself if those children of Job had been observing a righteous life before God Satan would not have been able to touch them in the same way that he couldn't touch Job's friends yeah they were they had their follies yeah they even operated and, and, and represented Satan through their children but as they stood as men of God Satan couldn't do away with them like he could Job's children <sighs> and this is the responsibility of the church this is why it's important to open and discern rightly the word of God to do simply what is done to what it, what it says, what it's done to, to follow after and pursue God's truth God's holiness God's uprightness to hold his ordinances his marriage and things up as, 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 as evidence of his wisdom as testimony to his goodness and rightness now, now, for instance, Christ blessed all food and, and, and opened the way that we may go and partake. We were no longer, he fulfilled the sacrificial law. I can now eat shrimp and pork and, and almost everything, almost, apart from the things that the, as a Gentile believer that the disciples when they met and the apostles when they met in Jerusalem and affirmed by the Holy Spirit not meat sacrificed to idols, not uh, blood of animals, not meat from strangled animals and not sexual fornication. These are the things I must abstain from must abstain from as a believer I must make that commitment would you like your steak rare? no I, I can't have the blood cook it until there's no blood coming out of it would you like uh, some black pudding with that? no I don't eat the blood of animals now there's some uh, uh, amelioration that, that you might be in a place, somebody's house or, or a restaurant, and it's not one you'd return to, and these foods brought out, and Paul says, you know, eat, it's not about that, it's not about the legality of that, I'm not going to be struck down for those things. And it's standing for God, is it, I take those opportunities. I, I don't eat blood because it's uh, uh, the life force, the living force within us. And it's especially important to the God of uh, Isaac, or the God of Jacob, the God of uh, Christianity, to Jesus himself, because the only blood that I should partake in is his. God's, God's a jealous God. Uh, 
Where shall I meet my fellow? Finding the church, founding the church, preaching and speaking of the things of the kingdom, blessing others, reaching others, uh, uh, and teaching rightness and, 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 and truth according to the gospel. It's an impossible task for me. And yet it's not about me. It's all about Christ. It's all about God, His Spirit, His truth. It's real. It unfolds every day. This creation is something He created. It's beauty, it's splendor, it's majesty, it's angels uh, uh, and powers and potentates and dominions, the small g gods. The sun and the moon, the, 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 the things that, that, that cause this universe to be. According to his will. According to what is necessary to make that right. To make it that, that this is how it is. And of the things, of the, the pinnacle of things... God's relationship with humanity, his desire to share his creation, that, that it may be appreciated, that it may be recognized, that, that, that he may rejoice in that relationship. Wow, it's, it's good. Autonomous, separate from him, an image of him, yes, but yet still created to be you know, so capable of that appreciation. Wow, it's really nice. It's, it, it's so amazing and beautiful. And, and if I really think about it for a minute or more, perfect. This is the cursed version. And it's perfect. What, 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 what does the non-cursed version of this look like? Feel like? Yeah, about 20 degrees hotter. <laughs> perfect. No death, no corruption, no... no cycle beyond what is right for the day to be. Even in that, that curse, of course, the, the, the understanding of where it's come from, how it's come about, what's proceeding because of the things that have happened, have come to pass, that this should, should be totally and utterly wiped away. And every life in it, that, that's where it should be. For its transgression, for its sin, for its sickness for its corruption and yet what God has done is said no I'm going to pay a price to redeem it I'm going to do something that will cost myself and, and, and redeem it that's what he's done that's how he's changed it and then in that changing there will be an inevitability of the, of the coming time of that full return Joyous singing, brilliant, you know, so good that the people who witness it, that the people who see and know of the things that God, who is God, has done, that they'll want to worship Him forever. We will run into the temple, we will run into His courts, we will bow down and lift our hands and we will sing his praises eternally with those beings that do that already because of how good how brilliant 
how superb i mean this is like it's the only way it could be done it's the most excellent way it could be done oh there's tragedy after tragedy and difficulty after difficulty challenge after challenge and yet inexorably it is working out god's plan and it will continue to do so until it is finished because god has declared it so It wasn't a mystery to him that he'd come to a point and say, I'm so done with these people, I'm going to wipe it out with a flood. That was necessary because it would not re he'd not return there. He could say, I'm never going to do that again. Our God strives with this world, strives with its people, strives with me and you in order to, to, to return us to that place of blessing. Yeah. He's doing it. He's doing a work that, that, that about which no man may boast. I read in uh, the book of John this week about you know that, that statement, Jesus didn't baptize anybody. Only the disciples baptized when it was people were reporting that Jesus was uh, baptizing, his followers were baptizing more people than John the Baptist had baptized. And then it says, very careful to say, but Jesus didn't baptize anybody, that nobody can boast, I had a better baptism than you because Jesus baptized me. This is the baptism of the believers. This is the baptism of people in water and spirit that Christ has made possible, that we all participate in that. It's his spirit that pours out and fills us and changes us. This is what is so hard to get across. So hard to, to, to convince people. We can't convince people. You've got it, you haven't. And this is, you know, the, the, what, what the religious people will default to Calvinist, oh, well, there's no spirit now, <laughs> to say, oh, well, I don't feel the spirit, so there mustn't be a spirit. And then let's twist scripture to, to affirm that that's viewpoint. Where anybody, of course, we have the spiritist movement who will say, oh, yeah, but we've been doing this all along. We, we are cosmic. But they don't have it either. I've danced in front of the 13 foot tall statue a gold statue of Buddha I know what that connects to and it's not God, it's not Jesus it's not that transformation it's not that spirit and to be touched to be held, to be drawn, to be shaped, to be left and challenged to be returned and held, to be lifted up, to be loved in a way which, which does the mind, transcends every other feeling and thing and relationship, not just a little bit, but a lot. Wow. You know, there's, there's one of the uh, um, Kim Walker Smith songs when she's in, in the flow of the spirit and praising God. And she turns around and she, she stops and she says, you know, if you've been changed by God, you know because you're not the same. You're never the same. It, you, your life is changed indelibly, inextricably, completely transformed. That that I was before and that which I am now are two distinctly different things. This is what the church should experience. This is what followers of Christ should be. Not that, that they're special, but that God, who is God, has said, I will pour out my spirit upon the whole earth. And that you can't enter heaven unless you are baptized in water and spirit. It's the spirit. They will worship me in spirit and truth. A time will come when the spirit of God will be evident in his people. So evident that the contrast will be foolishness and brokenness sackcloth and ashes 
what's the alternative I can receive Jesus in whatever capacity and walk and way and life I am now I can be transformed and in that transformation is a walk in righteousness and truth and completeness that I was born to be from the beginning that was my calling that's my raise and death is my reason for being it's my very life life's fulfillment of purpose to return to serve the king of kings the lord of lords the the lord of glory the maker and creator of all of this the completeness of the circle of life isn't some you know born eat multiply die the circle of life is, is be born and return to our maker and creator and in that in that is everything and in that is one need one right way one path that leads to that transformation total surrender the, 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 the rock of the Bible talks about a rock that, that falls on you either I know either you will fall on it and be broken in pieces or it will fall on you and this is where we are this is the life the exemplar life this is the change we should see it, 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 it must be may be less so for the young that come to Christ maybe less evident but the, 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 the older people that come to Christ they, they have that evidence John Newton of the brokenness that was necessary of the truth of the gospel I needed to die to myself I need to stop being me I need to, to, to bury my head in the dirt and dust and say to my God I am less than a worm before you for God to come in and change that life transform that life and change its understanding that life may be different born again made anew that the stone heart may be ripped out and the heart of flesh may be put in and that is the population that is the people of the church of Carpe Cruxis that is the expressed desire unless that has happened to you unless that's who you are you can't come in you're not a member welcome I mean come and sit down and have a cup of tea let's talk about it let's share let's, let's expose ourselves in the, in the <coughs> nicest possible way to to you that you may see that I'm not the same as I was before that I've been changed by Christ and in that change is a calling a, a, an op a desire to fulfill what his word says it, it, to go out into the into the world to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel to help to, to to lift to encourage to build and to take part in that, that you know that different steps I spoke of before that you know people who've never heard the gospel to see get a glimpse to get a, a sense of the gospel for those that have heard the gospel uh, to get a sense of, of being closer to, to, to what may be to accepting the gospel to those that may accept that new life to the fullness of discipleship the fullness of that receipt and there to enter into Christ's church to the church of Carpe Cruxis to the the white stone and, and take a part and a stand and a stance that follows and prevaricates and promotes and speaks only the things of the kingdom to the best of its ability to the limits of its strength in, in rain and sunshine mountain tops valleys by lakes and rivers all throughout God's creation here is the truth compass map Christ 
changed life, a changed outlook, a changed expression, a relationship with the, with the Most High God. If the Spirit is not present within me, if that light is not part of who I am, if I'm not part of this, that I'm not part of that church. I need to be in the flow. I need that 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 joy, and that 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 indefatigability. Oh, there'll be times when I fall. There are times when I need to be picked up. But that really should be the church's job. We should be surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who say, "I feel the same way." Let's let's lift up. And we're not because we don't make that commitment. I've made that commitment. Come join this church and let's make that commitment together. Let's stop standing in fields on our own and defining a church for ourselves instead of defining the one that's for Him, that glorifies Him, that does the things so simply and so honestly that there's no way that we stand before the courts or the synagogues or whoever brings us the authorities and says and lays accusations at our feet. We say, no, we're just doing what Christ says. I'm preaching, I'm, I'm giving myself open over to the, to the uh, preaching of his word, to the speaking and sharing of his word. I give myself over to the doing of the things of the kingdom, charity and compassion and love and preaching. I give myself over to the, to the following of God's word, the religion that so many people in this day and age, oh, I don't have a, a, a religion, I have a relationship. Of course it's a religion. Don't be so ridiculous. We are called to obedience and to be obedient we need to decide would discern through God's word otherwise I saw the earth and it was without form and void and heavens and their light was gone and I saw the mountains and they reeled and the hills rocked to and fro and I saw there was no man and the very birds had taken flight and I saw the farmland was wilderness and the towns all raced the ground before the Lord and his anger these were the words of the Lord the whole land shall be desolate though I will not make an end of it and I will, though I will not make an end of it therefore the earth will mourn and the heavens above turn black for I have made known my purpose I will not relent or change my mind at the sound of the horsemen and archers the whole country is in flight and they creep into caves they hide in thickets they scramble up the crags every town is forsaken and no one dwells there Jeremiah 4 verses 22 to 29 chaos what do we live in we live in the chaos we live in this madness where we think we're going to uphold this statue, we're going to join the, the feet of iron and clay. And the truth is they will not cleave together over certain issues there will be, oh, we can't actually agree on that. Well, what's the alternative? We're going to have to go to war. So we're going to have to go to war? Well, either that or we're going to have to gather people that, 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 that say no to their governments that stand together arm in arm and say, you know, we're, we're a church, a group of people, a congregation who say something else and believe something else. That we've got to put an end to this, this uh, um, statue, an end to the way things are going. And this may be the only evidence of it. And this may be, well, what do we do now? And the world's destroyed and the, and, the, and the technologies and the things we've relied on for so long are gone. What do we do? We're living in caves. The, the trees are dead. The, 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 the lakes are poisoned. The seas, the oceans are, 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 are scars upon the earth. And we become his church and we fill ourselves in spirit and truth and we trust that through the ages, through the years, through the generations, through the millennia, God will come again and all of this will be renewed. The only way to return it is not to try and rebuild it through human endeavour, but rather to trust that God, who is God, will do the things that God has said because, and the only because, He is God. When you think about, oh, I want to define the church, I don't think of like a huge cosmic impact. And yet here we are, that's what I've talked about. I mentioned last time, you know, that the, the reading of the Bible in its chronological order that it was made. So the book of Job first, and then into Genesis. So we may know the characters and the necessities of the people. 
that become familiar with these things in their right times and their right orders we see the sense of things in terms of the unfolding of, of history of the Jewish people in terms of the, the, the New Testament and the rightness of the letters being in order from the time of Christ and even the Gospels themselves come in at times that if we read in order we get a sense of God's correctness and greatness again that his spirit may work more effectively through us as we seek and listen and learn of his truth that we follow after the things the Bible says we, we, we uphold what God has ordained so does that mean that I'm under condemnation if I keep a... No, it's not about, but I, I, I observe feast days and new moons and Sabbaths because it's God's order. It's what God has ordained. He has set the clock, his timing, and in that timing there is wisdom. So I follow after it, but I don't, I don't say to others, oh, you're a sinner if you don't do these things. But my recommendation, my joy, my life, my testimony is that wow these things really make sense better than, than following after the things of the world and certainly better than following after the things of the, the wrong things those inspired by demons by other gods and powers and potentates and dominions and that they themselves may be lifted up whether it be the sun or the moon or Baal or Chemosh Molech or Dagon the Lord who is the Lord the Lord Yahweh who is also uh, uh, Yeshua the great I am he's the God the most high God he's the one that we need to pursue so his ordinance let's look where his ordinances and statutes look to those marriage is a marriage of a man and a woman a man and a woman is you know xx chromosome xy chromosome it's written and hard coded into our very being there is no mistake in that and that's that's why with these challenges are put in so that we follow god's will we do after god's will we pursue rightness in in marriage and relationship Oh, but for a wife to submit to a no, wife, submit to your husband. And husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He died for the church. He was prepared to lay down his life for the church. And though it's not a requirement, where well, preparation is. love is not taking advantage love is not destructive it is a fire that burns and and does not destroy <sighs> seeking god's will and god's way and, and and promoting a church because it knows and thinks and sees rightly and follows after the spirit of god and the spirit of god's alive in it it doesn't make those mistakes it, it, the, 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 the traditionally hampered the, the progression of the church again that the, the slips that lead to money grabbing and power the, the madness that is adultery you know oh well they, we're really in love no well then prove it stay abstain for three years and move yourselves to a place where you, you, you're out of the things and only you know break up the relationships you're in if 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 they are you know if there's adultery it's the only cause for divorce if not you pursue after the marriages that you've entered into you must I, 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 that, you know, as a witness, it's also to testify to these things, is to do these things. I have testified to a very errant wife. Very. Someone who condemns people who worship on a Sunday. Who says, oh no, you can't worship God with drums. You, you know, you can't eat meat. And condemns those who do. somebody who, who you know stands and testifies to follow a false prophet over the truth of Christ that that's my wife 
that's the woman that I married. But do I put her aside? Do I, do I, do I put her under my feet? No. Do I bring her to the before the church? Do I shame her and cast her out? Like, yes, yeah, yeah. They're the things that the Bible says to do. Well, I hold my hand firmly towards the time of reconciliation unless God himself moves me away from that. That's testimony. That's what we're called to. That's right relationship and right witness. That's the thing that I will go before God with on the last day. It's not for me to break what God has put together. And it pains me. Trusted in God is following after his work and his will and his way and his order because that is what is right and good and true. That is what blesses, that's what the, the very fabric of the universe, what brings it and makes it pure and right and good. That's the things of heaven, that's the things of the kingdom. That's righteousness and truth. And anybody looking from the outside in will see that. And yes, they rail against it. And yes, they oh, well, yeah, I've got a different opinion of this. Because they don't have that sense of spirit. They don't have that sense of pursuit. And yet the time is coming, and, and will continue to come, that that church must happen. That white stone is an inevitability because it's true. The vision is true. The interpretation is correct. God himself has revealed it and God himself will see it through is it a woe to all those people that, that aren't staying at that I, I, this is such a chaotic time as is necessary feet of iron and clay following after the world my choice is not to be part of it my calling is not to be part of it I am not responsible for that other than saying there is a sword coming other than professing the truth founding the church doing the things of the gospel that's my walk, will, way profession that's my calling and that I do to the best of my ability, even though there are times that I, 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 I fall or, or I wrestle or I hide, run and hide and cry out. And yet I return and, 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 and God in his grace and mercy is there for me. It's not about me. Michael Robert Jackson. And yet it is. And yet what I've received and what I am and what makes me special is nothing compared to what you are and what's available to all who would do that. I, I am a wretch. I'm right on the outside. I preach. Uh, one day I will sit with Paul and John the Baptist and those others who, 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 who are the least in the kingdom of heaven. And we will contest and laugh and share about who is the least. And we will live on the very rim of the kingdom, the very rim of the holy city, the very edge of it. And we will not be pilloried or, or celebrated for that just be the way it is and we will rejoice because we're still in the kingdom we still made up with God we still reconcile to God we still decide in our brokenness like Peter to return to God like Jonah
It is a wicked and godless generation that asks for a sign, and only the sign that will be given it, the only sign that will be given it is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Jonah was in the sea monster's belly for three days and three nights, and in the same way the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the bowels of the earth. At the judgment when this generation is on trial, the men of Nineveh will appeal against will appear against it, and ensure its condemnation, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and what is here is greater than Jonah. Wow. Tough times. Unnecessary measures. Be strengthened. Join in. Sign up. If you read this and you and you hear in its profession, in, in, in what I've prayed to speak in for the Spirit, that the Spirit speaks and says join this church be a part of this wherever you are it's not about you know having to get posters or sit in a building or, or share it's about regularly coming and knowing and connecting with this address with this group and that it may grow into that house group model it may grow into that you know groups that meet together that ha that structure that, 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 that reflects God's glory and allows the church to operate in that rightness that it, that, that it may be checked and validated by itself so it remains strong and pure without the need for other things to come in than it might be a, a, a living body strong and strengthened through the spirit of Christ and, and, and the things that have, God has caused to come about that, that we may share globally a practice that, that, that grows and grows and grows and grows and grows until it covers the whole earth that it continually verifies itself and corrects itself to keep aligned with God's will that it doesn't separate itself off and become grand and, 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 and given over to selfish pursuit and desire that it continually acts uh, obviously and transparently in the goodness of God that God's blessing may be poured out upon it and the world may be changed that statue may be smashed down and in a short period of a, of a few years we can come out of our ivory towers and, and, and stand together in fields of green, in days of sunshine, and sing God's praises and lift up and look for opportunities to encourage each other and to go out into the world to change it for the better and the goodness of all of mankind. That's vision. That's the Church of Carpe Cruxes. Lord, I pray that this is your message. I pray that this is what you want me to speak and author and say and do and testify to for your glory alone. Amen. May you be blessed in your day and way. May you seek truth. If you are moved to sign up, you can go to carpetcruxes.net and sign up. There's, a, there's a, a contact page. You say, can I join and be a member? And I'll send you a thing that says yes. Well, say, do you profess Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? Are you baptised? That kind of thing, probably. I don't know. I've not I received one. So if you if you request that, challenge me. And, and Lord, challenge me in this. I want to want to encourage a membership of spirit-filled believers, a membership of of people that profess that God has changed their life, who testify to it, who prepare to give over their lives to pursue the things of the kingdom whatever it is and wherever they are for God's glory and the covenant of his kingdom upon the earth so in your day and way may you be blessed may you be strengthened, may you be encouraged may the words of the spirit dwell with you and stay with you and resonate with you may you draw ever closer to the, the king of heaven that he was opened a way that we may enter into his 
uh, uh, temple and, and, and courthouses with praise and thanksgiving that we may uh, s- uh, gain a sense of that now that we may experience his provision and his abundance and his blessing and his overcoming that we may come against the things of the enemy as we arm ourselves according to Ephesians 6 10 to 18 with the full armor of God that we may stand in the evil day and not only when all is said and done stand firm that we may glorify the king that we may overcome the dominions powers and potentates of this dark world that we may sing his praises that we may speak the name of Jesus that we may not think of ourselves as high or great or grand in anything other than the fact that we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and been transformed by him and given our lives over to him again the freedom that he has granted us that we may serve him and pursue him and glorify him all the days of our life on this earth and then forever in a heaven that is beyond our imaginative imagining good and great and glorious and brilliant and i pray this in the name of jesus yeshua the messiah amen if you have opportunity to speak and share the gospel may you do so if you have opportunity to meet with others and speak about the things that have been spoken about today may you do so may you open the words of daniel 2 and look and see and understand that that's the truth that's where we are and knowing where we are means that the next part of that prophecy the thing that inevitably must happen is the feet of iron and clay will not cleave together it's not something we're shaping to happen but something that will happen because it was called from the beginning they will not cleave together and they will come apart and the feet at the feet of iron and clay a white stone will emerge not shaped by human hands and it will smash the feet of iron and clay and the and the iron and the copper and the bronze and all the other bits the silver and the gold and it will grow to be a mountain and that mountain will cover the whole earth may it be the church of carpe crucis may it be god's will that shapes it and brings it to life and fruition for his glory in jesus name amen i shall be a That's what I've been talking about. I'll we'll see you. You don't get to see the birds and the ducks and the things that come and go. That make me stop and make me think. I'm in the presence of God. The place where, where I'm preached today, the place behind that spoke, come and preach here. I live in God's presence. That's what's changed me. And there's times, yeah, when it when it diminishes or gets more intense, and yet it provides a difficulty because you're trying to communicate with people who say that they're Christian or they're believers or they're doing things, and they're clearly not following. They're following after other gods and other things selfish endeavor you pray to connect I pray to connect with others that are like minded because only in that acceptance only in that recognition will we ever build that church which is necessary to be built where God's people come together to 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 uphold and uplift and grow and strengthen and 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 become to the point where that statue can be smashed to stop the world from building houses and buying and selling each other for money instead of going after the things that truly profit the kingdom of heaven the things of the spirit the lifeblood of that church amen much love See you next Saturday.